The Sparkford Inn. Where on earth is that? Well, it's in Sparkford, of course. Where's that? It's near Yeovil in Somerset, right on the border with Dorset. And I've come here, I should have said we've come here, because Wayne's here somewhere, probably in the pub, for something which is very close to my heart. Just think how many hours you've spent sat in the garage at home, covered in dirt and grease and oil, trying to get your bike back together, workshop manual on the floor, or even trying to get the damn thing apart in the first place. Now, whatever machine you own, Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, whatever, you'll probably have an owner's handbook with it. But you may be more familiar with the aftermarket workshop manuals, possibly the climber ones, they're made in America, or the ones made here in the UK from Haynes, and they live just down the road. And this is just up the road. In fact, this is the place where they produce all those manuals we've referred to. Hundreds and hundreds of different ones, and they've got a library full of all the ones they've done in the past. And of course, they make all the ones for the future. And in fact, I uh, just want to point out, I wasn't in the pub. I never go in the pub. Never anywhere near the pub, won't let me in the pub. When they first started, they produced the motorcycle ones back, way back with these. This is a Honda 50 manual and the Honda 65, 70 and 90. You probably won't remember them, they're fairly old. Paul will, probably even had one. Um, they've even done this Bantam manual here. And they've done this one right the way through. They never stop publishing that. It's on demand all the time. Hey, can't help but spot that one. The old CX500. If you're a courier, that's the Bible, isn't it? I mean, there's so many people with CXs earning a living out of them. You need a manual like that to keep you informed. What else have we got? Oh, look at that, Norton Commando. Now, Norton Commandos, I mean, it's a classic machine. And you might be back into biking after a long time. You might have treated yourself to a classic like this. And you've still got to know your way around it. Perfect for the job. All the photo photographs you need, all the information you need. I mean, the very latest stuff as well they produce. The Suzuki GSX-R600 and the 750, right up to 1999. And even as we speak, Paul is over in the workshop talking to some lads there, the mechanic and the author about the very latest machine, in fact, a ZX-9R. And here is the ZX-9, not quite in bits yet, but nearly in bits, and Mark and Pete here have got the job of taking it apart and putting it back together. Is there only you two guys gonna do this? Yeah, I'd say there's, now there's just the two, Pete's a mechanic, I'm the author, and I also take the photographs as right. we do the project. I called you a photographer before. You did. <laughs> <laughs> that's far too common a term for you. No, though, that's right. So you, you used to do about sort of three or four years ago before digital photography came in. We did right. have a, a photographer as well, so it was a team of three. Right. But now with digital photography, uh, well, anyone could do it. So you're the author. Yes, right. right. I do apologise. And Pete, you're the mechanic. That's right. Are you going to yeah. take this to bits on your own? Yeah, yeah. With a bit of guidance from Mark. And put what it back together. Do you only do bikes or do you do cars no, as well? I do cars as well. Yes. So any, whatever cars, comes in, cars you're, and bikes. you're the man, are you? Yeah. Right, I mean, is it just years of years of experience, just knowing where to dive in? Um, we do it in a fairly methodical, you know, we don't just rip it to bits. We right. Have to, we work through it. So we tend to sort of follow the same sort of strip down pattern, and rebuild pattern on every right. bike. Do you actually get your hands dirty, Mark, at all? I do just uh, only when I have to, but uh, yeah, there has been no. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I mean, you know, you take it to, I mean, all right, it's a methodical thing. I've had engines in bits, and I'm sure lot, lots of people have had engines in bits. You put them back together, and then you think, oh, hang on, where does that bit go? Shouldn't that have gone down there before I put all that back? I mean, does that ever happen? Have you ever had a cock up, Pete? No. Go no, on, be honest no, with me. No, but no, you have. no, I don't think we have. We, we, tend to, <laughs> we lay everything out in a sequence right. on the shelves over there, and, and we work through it step by step yeah. and rebuild. We tend to take, we'll probably take it out and strip it right down and clean it all, and then rebuild it piece by piece yeah. and yeah. take yeah. photographs along the way. But so we do actually take the trouble to, to keep assemblies as assemblies and don't, right. say, don't mess up the clutch with it. The gearbox, yeah, because like I say course. one six mil bolt loose very much like it's another six mil bolt. It does, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you've got them all together in a box, it's it can get tricky. Right. Yeah. So a tidy workshop is an efficient workshop. Exactly, yeah. Right. Okay. What? Well, what? Well, I've got to ask you. What's the? I mean, this is a Kawasaki Japanese. What's? Is there any particularly good bikes to work on? Easier than others? This is a four cylinder. What about others? About triples that you do twins or anything? Uh, the Jap, all the Jap stuff. All the Jap stuff. It's, it's it's pretty good. It's, yeah. it's methodical. You don't need many special tools. I mean, as long as you've got a good, a good selection of tools, there's, I mean, there's only a couple of special tools you're going to need to strip over, and that's completely down to every mm. single component off. It's like a rotor puller yeah. um, and a clutch holder, really. Other right. than that, it's just straight 10mm spanners, 10mm sockets. Yeah, it's, it's pretty universal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, on bikes. They're, they're, they are pretty good. So what's the, what's the turnaround time on something like this, from bringing it in, bits and pieces, back together? Uh, if, it, if, it's, if it's just a one bike project, it's roughly about two weeks. And two that's weeks. Every nut and bolt? That's everything, yeah. I mean, the engine, probably the engine's the best part of a week of that. 
Right. And then it'll be a week doing fork legs, steering out bearings, rear suspension. Do you do foreigners? Sorry? Do you do foreigners? <laughs> <laughs> I just come out of the job for it all. Uh, so what we'll be up to on this now, you, you, you've got it nearly in bits, what is it, engine out next? Engine out next, yeah, we've done um, carburetors, fuel pump, we tend to do like the, the ancillaries on the way down, then next thing is engine out and we'll strip it, right. and the actual engine pictures are done on the way back, like Pete says, when it's all clean, right. it's all been clean. Well, um, there's a bit to go, don't let me stop you. No, we best get on. I'll go and find the coffee <laughs> machine, you, you crack on. All right. Wow, that was quick, wasn't it? Look at that. The magic of television there, guys. 20 minutes and gone, That's man. That's it that. takes. Hey, <laughs> superb. Right, so where are we up to with this? What are we going to do now on it, Pete? Yeah, we're about to split the crank cases now. Right, and it's just gone, uh, presumably, perfectly smooth, smoothly up to now. No yeah, problem. Yeah. This is a yeah. C, ZX9 C version. That's right, yeah, this is the later one. Right, you've already done the B model. Yeah. Is it vastly different? This is, yeah, surprisingly, this is... I mean, this engine's based more on the, the 600 and the ZX6R, yeah. whereas the, the B model's got a very similar to the old ZX-R 750 engine in it. You said to me, two weeks turnaround for the bike. That's stripped down, back together. Well, it doesn't stop there, does it? Because no, as that's, an author, you've that's got right, a, yeah. a lot of work I to mean, do. I mean, two weeks is just purely doing the mechanical side of it, taking the, taking the photos, taking the engine apart, taking the bike apart. Right. Then it's probably another probably further three months for me actually doing the writing. Three months? Yeah, it's, oh, it's, wow. it's quite a while. Wow. You know what I want to ask you? You know, going away from the engine a bit, uh, going on to plastic bodywork, little clips and things, and they're, they're always a nuisance. And, and I've looked at books and it says, under there you will see, if you look carefully, a little spring uh, and that you would never know was there no. if you didn't read the manual. How do you know it's there? Oh, it's pizza under the hands well, on. I mean, with the information we're given, hopefully we can get it apart, but sometimes, you know, you just got to go for it. I mean, it is a research workshop. We are, you know, yeah. we're here to find out what is behind. So, so do you ever break things? Plastic work. Plastic clips occasionally. Not so much on bikes, but we do cars as well. Right. Cars. So you do do some damage occasionally? Oh, only minor. I suppose that's what we pay, pay, pay yeah. for the manual all, all for. All yeah. in aid of yeah. research. Exactly. Yeah. Research, yeah. We would rather you break it than we, than, than we flipping break it. It costs a fortune, this plastic work, doesn't it? Right, so this is going to strip the crankcases. What, more pictures? Clean it up and do that? Yeah, we together. do the pictures on the way back. So obviously, you can see the state of it yeah. there on the way down. Right. It's just it's just too oily and dirty to do it. So on the way down, it's just, just keep an eye on how things go together. Right. People clean it up, spend a day or so cleaning it up, and we take all the photos on the way back. Excellent. Right, so you've got another three months' work after this, right in your book. Yep, sat at my desk downstairs. Right. <laughs> Have you got another bike coming in, Pete? Do you yeah, know, what, do you know I, what's next? I think there's a Yamaha Diversion coming in next. Right. We'll probably hold to that one. Yeah. That's your next job. Yeah. Good stuff. Right, OK, well, you've got it apart pretty quick. Uh, I bet you can't get it back together as quick, so uh, <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Uh, crack on, have fun. All right, cheers. <laughs> From Mark over in the workshop, we come here. Because what Mark does is download his information onto disk. There is, in fact, in these files here, negatives. There's all these disks, and there's a couple of great big safes full of all the information. These are the archives. But from this disk, then, stuck in a computer around the corner here, John is working frantically to make the pictures just that little bit better. He's working to alter the size, put pictures and arrow markings on the photographs to go into the actual publication. And further on, at the back of the manual, there's always those wiring diagrams. Oh, they're hard work, I can tell you. And nowadays, they're in colour. And there's a young lady over here doing that. So I want to introduce you to Carol here, who does the wiring diagrams, don't you, Carol? I do indeed. And what happens is we have these through from the manufacturer. This is what you call a schematic diagram. And that's a photocopy of it. From this, we turn it into this which is the finished one in the Haynes style. And in colour. And in colour. Very um, pretty. What we have to do, we have to make sure that all these symbols are made into our Haynes style symbols. These symbols are the same throughout our whole range. That's cars and bikes cars, and everything. Cars, bikes, everything. OK, so ignition switch is the same, um, a light switch is the same, a fuse is Got the you. same and so on. And, and these bulbs and everything, they're all colour related, so they, the indicators are obvious. That's right, so whatever happens to be on the bike, it's this particular colour. And where they're yeah. laid out as well, aren't they? Because like your tail light and your that's indicators right. are so we on the front and back. We try and set it right as much as we can, as you would see it on the bike. The front of the bike, 
the back of the bike with the rear lights, the left side and the right hand side, so that it makes it easier for the, for the customer to find so out where the So amateur spanner man like me has no problem, no complaints, it's easy to work out. So we've only got ourselves to blame if we mess up the wiring. That's right. They make it sound very easy, but it's obviously very difficult to get this final product. And I do fancy the idea of going and getting one of these bikes and I'm going to go at the wiring, just for the heck of it. But right, this is, this is only the next stage in the process. Thank you very much, Carol. Because after this, we go over here then to paste everything together. And it's a little simpler than it used to be. Because in the days of old, what they had to do is stick them to paper. The actual printed bits were stuck on there. It just sort of reminds me of being back at school in the art class. Amazing. But that wasn't so long ago, sort of four or five years ago. But since then, things have got a little bit more high tech and they're using computer systems here. And in fact, Steve's got one, as they say, they made earlier. Look at that. Thanks very much, Steve. This Yamaha YZF here. And that's the finished product. A little fatter than you would normally get. But that then, from this point onwards, goes down to the print shop and they get on with making the manual as you know it. And then all the information comes down to the guys in this room. This is a Ducati on here, as you see. Very funny lighting in here because we use these aluminium light sensitive plates. And this is to make the plates for the printing press. What they do, they pull this thing down, that goes on there, shut that there, and the image is actually etched into the plate like that, using this ultraviolet light. That's why it's all a bit funny color in here. But they've got to be very careful with these plates, you know, because if they were to get the plates mixed up, you would get pages in one manual that perhaps shouldn't be there. Now, that would be confusing, wouldn't it? I did hear a rumour that many years ago, somebody mixed up some plates for the Rover and the Allegro, and they finished up making a Legover. Ha! How about that? Oh, here we go. Legover, eh? I think he should stick to just riding motorbikes and not writing scripts with jokes in, don't you? It took him three weeks to do that. Anyway, these foily things, which are awfully noisy. In fact, I've got a new job. Sound effects, eh? Phew. Anyway, these foils go into this thing, this huge printing machine, and it is big. In fact, this is a million quids worth of printing machine, yeah? And it does up to 11,000 copies an hour. That's a bit better work rate than you get out of me, I can tell you. And they then end up coming out of this here. So to work a big fancy printing machine like that, obviously you need a big fancy control board and this is exactly what we've got. It's massive, got hundreds of buttons and it's like a flaming recording studio. You know, it's amazing. But the guy who works this, Peter, has obviously got to have a keen eye as well because he checks the work. He goes down to this magnifying glass, makes sure that all the print is just so and perfect. And if he's not happy with it, he, he then uses the buttons. Uh, talking of buttons, I just caught that one then. Now, I thought that was on number five, but it's on six now. Um, you see, you've really not got to touch these things. Uh, Peter? Peter? I'll tell you what, I hope I haven't uh, knackered that machine up over there. I'll keep my hands in my pockets from now on. Anyway, so we have a binder, OK? And we have the text. The, put, the two pieces have then got to be obviously put together. So, the text goes along on this conveyor belt here into this machine. And then further along here, they're mated together. Who <laughs> were uh, misses? Anyway, and then when they're mated together and glued and so on, they then come out over here, out of this machine. Along the conveyor belt, this is a little ride, enjoying themselves, a little trip. Stacked up there to go into another machine and then they're all wrapped up so that they don't get dirty and grubby when they're on the shelf at the shop. Well, it's not just workshop books, you know, they do here. Loads of other books as well. Look at this. The Tiger 100 and Daytona, eh? The Lambretta book, I bet that was popular a few years ago, probably more than it is now. The Ducati story. And I bet this has got to be one of the best sellers. Carl Fogarty, look, there he is, number one, in his full glory on the front cover. But when they've actually finished making the books, they go into the boxes and they've got the telephone around them, they come here to this massive, and I mean massive, distribution warehouse. There are more books in here than I've ever seen. So next time you sat on your garage floor, and you've got your bike in bits, and you're covered in oil and grease, and you're pulling your hair out, trying to get it back together, don't panic. It, oh. Just a minute. It can be done, because you've seen the proof. Now, what, you what, what's up? Just, uh, right then, bye, folks. Go and make a cup of tea. Go on. <laughs> what? Um, you know that book you're on about mm. uh, earlier on, and you, that leg over. The thing. leg over, yeah. Uh, have you just got one, like, one of these books? I've got one in my car. Well, you come want to on, see it? <laughs> it's very good. <laughs>